is the day God has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it because whenever I'm here to see you and you're there to see me, I feel excited. This is another edition of the life of a preacher's kid. You're welcome. Meanwhile, if you're new to this channel, hit the subscription button and of course, the notification bell so that you get to know whenever the life of a PK is hitting your screens again. Today, mm, today is that day. I have a special lady here with me. She is a pastor's wife. She is a preacher. She is raising PKs, not one, not two. And she's going to be grazing our screens, ladies and gentlemen. The PK Village. Today we have the opportunity to be talking with First Lady Felix, um, First Lady Rita Felix Awa. Hmm. Ha. She, she goes by many names, so let's just leave it at that. Today we talk about the mistakes preachers, pastors' wives make when they are raising PKs. Stay with us. I'll be right back. You're welcome. Today we have Madame, the first lady of a chosen people. You know, she leads a church alongside her husband and she's raising PK. So what better person to tell us about the mistakes parents, mommy pastors, make when raising us. Today is going to be an exciting show, I can tell you definitely. Mama Rita, you're welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have you. Um, why do I have the feeling that this voice is not the, <laughs> it's not the voice we should expect as we go on in the show? <laughs> mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I'm happy to be here. Okay. Know, I'm always excited when I'm called upon to talk about pastor's kids, because I know that is a very big problem in our society today. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are expected of them. But at times, we, the pastors, don't know how to raise these kids. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to be here, and I know by the grace of God, by the end of this show, the pastors will know what to do mm -hmm. with, with their kids. So let's get straight into the main course. Let's get straight into the main course. Where do, or what do you think go, goes wrong? What are the mistakes? pastors, preachers, pastors' wife make when raising their children? Uh, before I go to the mistakes, I just want to say something. First thing that pastors have to know is that their kids are as natural as other kids out there. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't spiritualize their kids so much. Know that this, this child you are raising is the same person as the child of the elder, the child of the or the child of the other person mm -hmm. you have out there. So, and try to meet their needs. I think the first thing, uh, a mistake, the first mistakes we make as a uh, pastor's wife or pastors in the ways of our children is that we do not pastor these kids or shepherd them the way we shepherd the church. Mm. We mm. tend to neglect them a lot because we are trying to walk our salvation with fear and trembling or we are trying to walk on our assignment. And we forget that the first assignment are these kids. Mm -hmm. So we tend to focus on the church so much. We tend to go and visit Sister A, visit Sister Y, visit Sister Z. And we forget that we have children right at our nose that we are supposed to raise mm -hmm. in the fear of the Lord. Remember, they are our first church. And if they are our first church, then we should treat them like that. We have to start pastoring them first. We have to give them enough care and attention back home. We have to shepherd them. So, um, can I say that there's a scripture that says, if you cannot provide for your family in every facet, yeah. you're worse than an infidel. Yeah. I've had so many friends who have walked up to me and they're like, Rudy, to be honest, I don't care anymore. I, I just want to disassociate myself with whatever has to do with the pastorship mm. and all of that. Could it be because they feel cheated? They feel like the, the, the love and the attention that should be showed them by their parents is shown to the church rather than them? Oh, you know, to an extent, I, could, I can say I'm a picky mm -hmm. because my mother and my father were the founders of Full Gospel Mission 
the chongi, the village where I was. Mm -hmm. So all the pastors live in our house. You know, when, wow. they, when they come in, my mother would like, I think she would tend to forget that we exist. The, the pastors would take our bed, the pastors would take our oil, our rubbing oil, the pastors would take... And they push us to go and sleep in the, in the fire kitchen inside the smoke. Oh, no. And then they take our room and give the pastor. So you can imagine. So most of these children, they feel cheated because most of the time their place is given to the church. Mm. Of which, as a as a PK's as a as a PK's mother or father, you have to consider your kids first. Mm -hmm. I can say from my experience, I've gotten that experience of giving so much attention to church people, and I tend to forget my children. But now I've met that correction. Mm -hmm. They don't get into my kids' room. They don't get into their, their personal space. Their food is their food. Their clothing is their clothing. You don't come in and start sharing and just mixing up their lives. Mm -hmm. Because the pastor's house is their personal space. Mm -hmm. So you have to be, you have to, you have to know that those children, their own space is your house. Mm -hmm. So don't mix the house with the church. Mm -hmm. And by the, time, by, by the time you do that, they feel neglected. Mm -hmm. And they tend to start giving ears to wrong people. Then they right. get spoiled. So let's move on. What other, what other mistake do preachers make when raising their children? The next mistake that preachers make when raising their children is discussing other preachers negatively before their kids. Mm -hmm. Criticizing other servants of God before their kids. When you do that, for example, let me say there's a servant of God who has done something wrong to you and you have a problem with that person. When discussing it with your, with your wife or with your spouse, please send the children to their room or tell them to, to leave the place. Mm. Because when you do that, you're making them to feel that the, the office of the pastor is it's not sacred. It's not good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like, hmm, if this uncle can do this, if this pastor, my mother is talking about, and they means mommy can actually do it. So they are not my mothers. The truth is, the experience is always... <laughs> sacrilege like they bring a name and uh, they put it on the table yeah and they cut from part to part they operate <laughs> from the toes to the nails and all of that and we are all exposed to those things and the truth is that it damages yeah it damages the child's brain yeah the child gets to church and when the child sees that the person, person yeah lifting up holy hands you can imagine what is going through <laughs> Sometimes I just look at it and I'm like, really? Really? Mm. So you don't have reverence for God? Mm. And I think it's because of that. Yeah. So let's go on. Okay, we have uh, another reason why, uh, another mistake that we make in raising our children is expecting perfection from your kids because you're trying to keep your name. Hmm. Expecting this kids to be so perfect because they're the pastor's child. Oh, because you're pastor's child. I remember I just said that to my little girl the other day. And she looked at me. I said, you don't have to play in church because you're a pastor's child. And this girl asked me, mommy, am I not a child? <laughs> She's just six years old. And it came back to my mind, oh God. You know, that's the problem we have. We pastors want these children to be perfect. They should dress well. They talk well. They should compose themselves in church. We don't know that these children are also going through the same developmental stages mm -hmm. that other children who are not pastors' the children, children go are go through. Mm -hmm. When they are adolescent, they are bound to make mistakes. The same with other adolescents out there. So we don't. Most of the time, we want perfection from them. We want them to, we, we behave as if they don't have feelings. I like the part where you say, for the sake of your name. Mm. Not because, because of God. Not because of God mm. or because you want the child to turn out fine. For the sake of okay. reputation. That's Throw it. more light on that. You know, most of the time we want our children to behave. We're not, not because, some of us, not because we really want to grow them in the way of the Lord. But we want them to behave like the pastor's daughter, the pastor's son, mm -hmm. what the society is expecting of the pastor's daughter, not what God is expecting mm -hmm. of them. 
So we tend to force them into a box, you know? You know, there's a way they want a pastor's kid to be. Wear long skirts, uh, dress, don't show your hand, you know? Some kind of things. You just want them to just do it automatically mm. without making them to know that these things is because you fear God, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not because I, I, you are a pastor's daughter. I remember when I was growing up, they said, oh, full gospel begin them. You know, full gospel children. Why should you wear trousers, you know? I, w I wasn't wearing the trousers at that time, not because I didn't love trousers. Oh, the word of God says I should be decent as compared to our church setting. Mm -hmm. I, was not, I was not doing it because I was trying to protect my mother and my father. But the day I went to university and I had the opportunity to wear the trousers, girl, you ah, rocked it. That's it. <laughs> this is true. This is, this is a reality that um, most of the children we have in this age can relate to. There are a lot of things that we don't do for the sake of reputation, yeah. but that damages the child. Yeah. That damages your child. Thank you so much. We'll take on this break, and when we come back, we continue to find out the mistakes parents, preachers make when they raise their children. <laughs> Thank you to our partners for making all of this possible. We have Roots Touch for the makeup and the beauty, the elegance you see here. We have amazing Grace Shopping Center and Nemeal Solutions for the sound and the wonderful images we have here today. Now, I want us to talk about boundaries because I feel like this is um, an error that parents make. It's my feeling. I'm, I'm a PK and I'm raising PKs. We make this error. We don't set boundaries. True more light on that. Yeah. That's the error we, we pastors or pastor's wife make. We don't demarcate between the home and the church. Mm -hmm. Now, a child is raised in the home and the child attends church. But we tend to mix this. Mm. At times we bring the church right into the home. The child is in the room and is hearing one Jehovah, you are the Mosai in the parlor. And there's one loud noise going on when the child really wants to be quiet. And there's one deliverance the, case. Yes. And right the, one, the one, one demon is saying that, out, out, out. And that child just need to be, need to watch TV at that time as a child. But the child, is, the child can't because the church has been brought right into the home. Mm. At times... We tend to bring church members, they invade the whole place. And these children do not know whether, are they living in their home or they're in church? Mm. So what I think pastors or pastor's wife should do is demarcate between your home and the church. When people come to home to visit, to visit, they should come to a home setting and visit quietly and leave. And then when it's church, they go to church. Let the pastor's office be in church. Mm -hmm. Pastor should not take his office into the sitting room. When people come and, come and meet him and they are sharing their problems, some are even crying, they are raising emotions in the whole place, and the kids are watching. So the children do not even know, is our house the church? Or the church is where we know we go. So mm -hmm. there should be a demarcation between the pastor's work and the pastor's home. Mm -hmm. I believe that the home is the bedrock of so many things, of the society in general. If, we, if your child misses the home, that feeling of the home, the child basically has missed everything. The child has missed everything. You spoke about the pastor's office being at church, not at home. It just brought one funny, very funny experience to my mind. I remember when I was a young girl. Oh, Father, Daddy, please forgive me. I remember when I was a young girl, and you see people rushing into the house to talk to my father. If you went behind any curtain in my house, you would find somebody. Yeah. My siblings and I, we were all hiding behind <laughs> the curtains to know what was going on. Oh my God! These are things that it's against. First of all, the pastoral ethics. ethics yeah, it's against. First of all, it does not help the no mental state. Yeah, and when we see, like when I when I see you, I know. Ah, uh, are you not getting married? Is it not you that they were counselling? Is it not you that? 
that's so true i just wanted to confirm <laughs> i just wanted to confirm what you said so let's yeah. forge ahead so sorry i, I still have to say something yes, about this on. particular point i remember i had that very issue you know i like sharing my experience mm -hmm. you know the, the experience you hear about somebody is not like what you really i had this experience but when i started the ministry and i had to just relax oh it's ministry oh my god people invaded my home I think the only place that they enter was my bedroom. Some were even struggling to enter my bedroom. And my kids were just missing. You cook food for the children, and the people who eat, the children will never have food to eat. My husband will never have food to eat. The whole place was just haphazard. But even the same people who came in and did this nonsense are no longer in church. Yes, they have left. Why? So what am I saying? You don't try to protect people by keeping them in your home. By saying mm. that, no, come so close yes. so that you can stay in church. And they come in and destroy your home, and you can't even keep them. It, it is God that keeps people in church, not you. Not the pastor. That's not the right. pastor that keeps people in church. Who keeps people in, in church. church. That's not, right. not the pastor. Mm -hmm. So don't push them into your home in the name of trying to show love. No, that's mm -hmm. not love. Mm. That's, that's a lack of knowledge. Wow. Because there are some... I have, by the grace of God, I've been opportunity to go to Nigeria. I've seen Nigerian pastors. Some of them, you don't even know where their homes are. When you go to church, you meet them in church, they minister to you to go to their homes. Mm. And how dare you pass in their home? What are you doing there? That's their personal space. I think that's what we should do. When we do that, our children will grow with the sanity of, of home training. They will not, this invasion will stop. And by so doing, they will grow up knowing what home is all about mm -hmm. because when they when they when they are when they, when their lives are scattered like that when they get to get married tomorrow they won't know the, the home setting mm -hmm. they will just be haphazard the circle continues. yes because they will mm -hmm. think that since they grew up in that environment of anybody entering the room anyhow maybe by the, by the, by the, by the, by the, by the, by the time they get married they will want people to enter their bedroom mm. anyhow enter their husband's bedroom anyhow why because they grow up in that setting anybody could enter anywhere mm -hmm. but when you make the children when they grow up in a well organized setting mm -hmm. when they get to their own homes they will be able to organize it for themselves thank you very much indeed i'm learning a lot the emphasis is the home is a safe space let your home be a safe space yeah. for your children and i'm sure that the pks are shouting wherever they are with what she has just said i experienced it i had situations where my parents brought in people to help them and i saw the same people hurt my parents terribly i saw them talk about my parents behind their back and the resentment i felt i feel like um it's when i got married and i started understanding certain dynamics in a house in a home setting and all of that that i actually started saying you know what just let all of this go yeah. just let all of this go i felt i felt resentment for a very long time at some point i was like nobody's going to stay with me you will not stay in my house no because of the kind of things that i saw some people we actually had good people and we had very terrible people mm. who came to the house and hurt my parents in several ways we'll, be, we'll take on this break we'll be right back if you're just joining us this is live of a preacher's kid live of a pk my name is rudy funwe and with me today is the first lady rita dumbi felix or rita felix dumbi and she's been talking to us about the mix the mistakes um parents preachers pastors wives you know the bishops make while raising their children. We are about wrapping up for today. Let's conclude on the other mistakes parents make when raising PKs. Okay, uh, thank you, Ruth, I'm grateful. What I want to say again is that mm -hmm. one of the mistakes of pastors make raising their, their kids is lack of friendship. Most of them don't befriend their children. You know, they are pastoring their children instead of befriending them. You no, know, they want to be that pastor, uh, being a pastor instead of being a friend. Mm -hmm. You know, everything with a child is the Bible says. <laughs> the Bible says. The Bible says in the book of, you know, Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. 
they keep doing that. They keep doing that. You know, you don't, you don't bring, you don't bring up a child all the time sounding Bible verses into that child's mind. Mm -hmm. You made the child familiar and mm. makes the thing not sacred. Mm. So most of them don't make, the, they don't befriend their children. If you ask, if you ask most of them, when is the last time you went into the, into your child's room, sat on the bed and discussed close things concerning your child? They are either running for, uh, especially we the, we the mommy pastors, you are either running for one women's meeting, you are, you are cooking for one chicken meeting, mm -hmm. you are you're, you're, you're counseling one young girl, forgetting you have a young girl in your house, mm. you have not counseled. You are, you are, you are, you are either uh, uh, policing people whether they have tied their hair or they have not tied their hair, they are wearing long skirts, they are wearing mm -hmm. short skirts, mm -hmm. you are so busy with that and you are forgotten, befriending your children mm. because when you make friends with them you'll be able to know how they feel about you and your husband their mindset you want to know how they feel about uh, the people who come home whether are they mm. satisfied with them or not will you befriend them because this is the problem we have uh, madame rudy most of these church people we bring to the houses in, into into our houses they come in and spoil our children Without us even knowing. Story of my life. Some of them even come in and try to rape your children. They do. I, I have been a victim of that. And the pastor came into our house and attempted raping me. Thank God my mother was my friend. Hmm. I had to run to her. Mommy, can you imagine? And the issue was solved. If not, and let me tell you how that thing took place. This pastor came in late in the night. He was sleeping three of us, my, my two sisters. They carefully removed my two sisters from the bed mm. and took them to another room. I said, okay, since I was like the smallest, I'll spend the night with the pastor. And the pastor started ministering in the night. Mm -hmm. Now, if my mother was my friend, because my mother was my friend, I had to tell her that. But most of the time, since our, past, our, 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 our parents are so holy, the, their ears are too holy to hear such a thing. Mm. The young girl will just wrap herself in that problem, in that depression, in that and situation, that, and then I start misbehaving out there. Mm -mm. Before you realize, having boyfriends, start living a loose life. I don't care why, because they are not befriending her home. Mm. They haven't told her, "I love you. You're beautiful. She's always you're being castigated." Mm -hmm. So she start finding love out there. That's, a, that's one of the reasons why pastors' children always go astray. Lack of affection from their parents. Because they're giving that affection elsewhere. It's always the Bible says, even when you, um, your child tries to open up, the first thing must not necessarily be the Bible says. Yeah. That must not necessarily be the first thing. You could say other things. Yes. Why not say, regardless, I love you. Regardless, you're my daughter. Regardless, you're my son. Whatever you've done, my arms are always open for you. Yes. Why must you start with, the Bible says, he that does this must be handed over to the devil. Yeah. I have been handing over others over to the devil. I'll and hand you, over. you cannot be an exception. Mm. Because what would the church members say? Thank you for that point. That's yes. really important. So let's round up on this. Yeah, our last point, uh, the last point I have to talk, because of a matter of time, is over expectation. Mm -hmm. You know, many of us are expecting too much from these children. Mm. Too much. You know, you find a Dickens child who is singing the choir, you want to force your child into the choir. Maybe that Dickens child is called to sing. Mm. And your child may be called to be a journalist like you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Instead of pushing your child to be that journalist, because the Dickens child is a star in church, you want, you want your own child to become a star in that church too. Mm. So you don't ever expect too much from these children. You know, the Bible says children are a gift from God, and they come with their own unique destiny. Look for that child's destiny and encourage that child towards that destiny. Mm -hmm. And... You, you must not expect that child to be a pastor like you. I'm sorry I'm trying to divert, but let me say this. Your my child mama. must not be a pastor because you're a pastor. Why not make it? Why, why can't that child be a scientist mm -hmm. who invents the, the latest car? Why can't that child be an engineer 
Or why can't that child be a writer? Must that child be a pastor? Must you push that child to the stage? And I think this children go down they are chewing their mouth. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen a, a pastor's child who is chewing mouth during uh, memory verses in church? Mm-hmm. Because the child has struggled to cram. There's no way. There maybe, is that, no way. maybe that child is born from the left side of the brain. You no know, left side of the brain are scientists who are rational, mm-hmm. who are mathematic, mathematical. They don't know how to cram a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Then you are forcing that child to become a literary person because that child must show up in church. I don't do that. Don't ever expect a lot from them. Mm. At times, a, a, a visitor comes in. You know, they say, wait, they expect a person to, to come. Welcome, uncle. Welcome. Don't force them to do that. Just let them be. Just mm-hmm. teach them the ethics. Teach them the, the lifestyle of God. And they will gradually pick up. Some of them are slow learners. They will gradually learn. Mm-hmm. Don't over expect a lot from them because they have the same mm-hmm. as other kids out there. They may have a prophecy over their head. God may have told you that this child will be a bishop, this child will be a prophet. You know, don't start saying that, hey, you prophesied from seven. You must prophesy from seven. Mm. It's my God, child, he has his ways. I must carry that man. That man to upon my life must come on you. Stop, stop doing that. Stop doing that. It demands on the child. God himself in due time mm-hmm. will cause it to manifest. That's right. That's right. And it's on that note that we wrap up today's show. Parents, please, preachers, please set the boundaries. Let the home be the safe space. Don't expect a lot. Be your child's friend. We heard it all. Thank you so much for coming. We'll have you again on the show because um, you mentioned something about discussing issues that go on in church and i feel like this is something we should really handle so we'll bring you again on on the show and uh, i hope you're expecting that episode again already i hope you're expecting the episode already thank you so much for watching god bless you see you next week